It's Create Day, my friends. Welcome to my channel. I've got three transformations for you today, so let's get started. I'm mixing up some plaster of Paris so that I can dip these moss-covered bunnies that I got from the Dollar Tree in there and just give them a nice smooth surface for painting. I just inserted a little wood skewer on the bottom to give me something to hold on to so that I could dip them and then it makes it easy to just put them into that styrofoam block so that they can dry. I did this same process on some styrofoam eggs in a previous video and found that it works really well to smooth out the rough surfaces. I've got these wooden spools that I got from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of four. I'm going to use three of them. So I'm giving each one two coats of white chalk paint. When the plaster of Paris was dried on the bunnies, I just went over with some fine grit sandpaper to make sure they had a nice smooth surface. And then they are ready for paint. I'm using navy blue acrylic paint for these items because I did not have this color in a chalk paint, which is what I would have preferred. Now I wanted to stamp these letters to spell the word hop onto the spools with my uh, stays on ink in midnight blue, but the rim of the stamp was just a little bit too big to fit on there, so I went ahead and stamped these onto a piece of bakery tissue so that then I can tear those letters out and decoupage them onto the spools instead. And I always clean off my stamps right after I use them. I want these to last a really long time. So now with those stamped on there, I'm just taking my water pen and going around each letter so that I can rip them out so they don't have a straight cut edge. Now normally when I decoupage I use Mod Podge. I wanted to try my Select Seal Matte Sealer. Um, I just wanted to experiment and see if that would work because it's not as thick. It's actually very thin and it dries really fast. And it did work. Um, I don't know, I'm on the fence. I, I feel like the Mod Podge would have pushed the bakery paper down into that spool better than this did, but you know, that's I like to experiment and see if there's different ways to do things. The one problem I did have with these is I, I don't think I let the ink dry long enough and I got some um, bleed, bleeding of the color onto the spool. So I did have to go back and touch that up with the white paint. Now I'm going to cover each one with some clear wax and wipe that back off so that I can go in with some antique wax and have more control over the darker wax. Now I'm applying the dark wax and wiping it back until I get the look that I want. Thank you. 
Next, I'm using some white wax. I want to kind of fade out some of that blue on the letters and tone down the antique wax. And here's how they look when that process was done. For the bunnies, I'm going straight white wax, no clear wax beforehand. I wanted to give these a much softer look, more worn and rustic. So I just gave everybody a good bath of white wax. And here's where you can see it's a huge difference between just the paint and the one with the wax on it. I cut some strips of jute twine and I am just applying those around the top and the bottom with some hot glue. This twine had a lot of fuzzies on it, so I just went ahead and cut it with my scissors and burned it with the lighter until I could get it kind of calmed down a little bit. It was really fraying. Next, I'm adding some Spanish moss to the tops of the spools with some hot glue. After the glue had set up on all of them, I just went around with my scissors and trimmed them up as needed so that I didn't have a bunch of scraggly pieces hanging off. I took three of my wooden skewers and just trimmed off the top portion so that I would have something to stick into the bunny and stick down in through that hole to help give these something for the hot glue to adhere to. So I just lined up where that stick would go in order to go down to the middle of the spool and then I take my hot glue and attach the stick in, into the bunny and then attach the stick, the other end of the stick, into the spool through the Spanish moss with hot glue. And that's all I did with these. I just kept this one really simple. Now my next project, I'm using this cardboard book box that I got from Michaels on clearance. I think I only paid a couple of dollars for it. And the first thing I wanted to do was give it a couple of coats of white chalk paint. Then I decided I wanted the front of the book to have a light blue background, so I'm using a chalk paint called Glacier, and I will be using the navy blue on the spine and the back of the book. Now I'm using my air dry clay to make this beautiful little casting from IOD's Lock and Key Mold. I dusted it with cornstarch first and then pressed my clay into it, and then I was able to just roll this out. It just is so pretty. I'm using Gorilla Wood Glue to attach the casting to the book. I have used Tacky Glue also, and it works well. I just, this is my go-to for my glue for the, my castings. And I'm just gently pressing down. I don't want to squish out any of the detail 
in that casting so I'm just gently pressing it down and I will let it dry for a little while not completely and then I can go in with my navy blue paint before it's completely dried I find that that helps prevent a lot of the shrinking and cracking that sometimes happens with the air dry clay so now I'm using my painters tape to mark this off so that I can get a straight line down where that spine meets up with the front of that book. Then I was able to just go ahead and paint the back cover of the book in the same color. It took uh, two or three coats, I don't remember, but with the acrylic paint, it just you just don't get the coverage that you do with chalk paint. So it just meant you know a little more time and effort on my part to get to the finished product. I'm going to be using some gel matte medium to apply these resin castings that I did. This one is from Redesign uh, Meadow Hair Mold and the dragonfly at the top there is from Iron Orchid Designs Monarch Mold. So I just used a stiff dry paintbrush to kind of um, pick up any of the glue that had seeped out on the sides there. I use the gel medium for this instead of the wood glue because it's more specific to adhering mixed media type um, items so it works really well but it also gives me plenty of working time to make sure I have everything in the position that I would like it to be in. Now with that gel medium dry, I can go over everything with a coat of the light blue chalk paint called Glacier. When that paint was dry, I went in with my navy blue acrylic paint to start painting all the castings. And yes, it would have been a lot easier to paint these before gluing them on. But I don't know. I just like working with everything as one piece. I wanted everything attached so that I could make it one whole unified project. I, I don't know what's wrong with me. <laughs> That's just how my brain works. So now I'm taking the navy blue and the light blue chalk paint a little bit on my little plate there and I've got a little bit of water on it so that I can start blending these colors around here and this is part of what I mean by that process of working on the entire piece. Um, I am blending the navy blue out I, I, this is so hard to explain I get it, the first, that's the first color I use really close to the base of those castings. And then I blend it out and then I add in that light blue and keep blending. So you get like this blue haze shadow around these molds. If that, I hope that makes sense and I hope you can see exactly what I'm doing here. Um, it's just a process of going back and forth blending and shading and blending until it looks the way I want it to look. That's my best explanation. So now the next step is to paint the inside of the box and I'm going to do that light blue glacier chalk paint. Now back to our castings, I'm taking the light blue chalk paint and with a dry brush just very lightly going over all the high points of these 
castings. Now I'm going to use Dixie Bell's Van Dyke Brown Glaze. This is a new product for me. I've never used it before. And boy, did I have fun with, I got that and the Dixie Dirt. And I, I just went to town on these projects with these items. I was so excited to get some new stuff. So it's just, it's just like any other glaze. You just wipe it on with a brush and then wipe it off, you know, any excess that you don't want on there so that it can kind of get down in all those little nooks and crannies and give it an aged look. So I did this over this casting on the spine of the book, and then I ended up just doing it over the entire spine and the back of the book to give it a really nice aged look. And now I'm going to use the Dixie Dirt in the color Ash to add some age to the castings. So this stuff you need to use with like a clear wax so that it has something to stick to. So I brush the wax around the edges of the molds and then go in with a separate brush dipped into the Dixie Dirt and start applying it up against those molds. And I miss, I, for some reason, I don't have the footage of the earlier part of this where, you know, I'm finishing up now, so I don't know what happened. But, but this is where I'm just dabbing it, that powder, it's just a powder. And you dab it in there, and then you take another brush and brush off the excess, and it just leaves this wonderful aged effect. It's just, ugh, I'm hooked. I absolutely love it. And now for the book pages, I'm using that brown, Van Dyke brown glaze from Dixie Belle. Same thing. I'm just going to brush this on top, bottom, and side and wipe it back with a rag. And it really does just give this effect that they're like old book pages. So here I'm using some white wax to add the kind of the white back into the bunny and the other castings that I had done with the dry brush because when I did my clear wax for the Dixie Dirt, I added the clear wax over the entire book and it took that white off. So I wanted to add a little bit of that back in and now I'm going in with my antique gold rub and buff to highlight the casting on the back of the, on the spine of the book. And then I will also use a brush to apply this lightly to the castings on the front of the book. Now I'm going to add this little sticker, it says limited edition, and I got it from the Tim Holtz Ideology sticker book. I'm going to apply this with tacky glue, and then I can go around the edges of this with my antique gold rub and buff to make it kind of tie in a little better with everything else I've got going on on this book. <laughs> oh, and here's where I'm doing the uh, rub and buff on the edges of the book as well.
and now I'm just highlighting around the edges of that sticker. Now for the inside of the little box, I'm going to add some rub-on transfers. These are, you know, navy blue, so it fits perfectly. Just going to cut out the ones I want to use. I got these off of Amazon. I, the company is called 49 and Market. And I just trimmed these out. I'm just kind of going to do a random pattern. And then I thought, oh, I want this little saying in there too. So I cut that one out. And then it's just a matter of just rubbing them on with the little transfer stick. Um, really easy. And it just gave it that finishing touch it needed for the inside. And with that, our little book box is complete. For my last project, I'm using this wood tray I got at the thrift store. The first thing I need to do is remove the handles. I'm not going to be using them on this one, but I will save those in case I need them for another project. I filled the holes with um, the Durham's water putty and then once it was dry I sanded it down smooth. I gave a light sanding to the entire uh, board and then wiped it down and gave it a coat of my Select Seal Matte Sealer. Ideally you would it would just be easier and quicker to spray paint like shellac or a clear coat of something but weather was not permitting that so that's why I did this by hand with the uh, liquid sealer and then next step was a couple of coats of white chalk paint onto the center portion of this tray Now with that dry, I'm going to use my chalk paste to apply um, some texture onto this. This is a stencil that I want to use in the middle, and that's a bunny I'm going to be putting on here, so that's why I've got that there so I can see how I want this to go, because I also want to use my crackle paste. So I decided to do the stencil with the chalk paste kind of in the center, and then do the crackle paste top and bottom and a little bit on the sides so that I would have a multi-dimensional like oh there once was this really nice little pattern on here and then the crackling came in because of the weather like it has to tell a story kind of so that's my train of thought with this and now I'm applying that crackle paste with a palette knife just trying to blend it down little bit into that stencil so that it all looks somewhat uniform and then I had to paint that with the white chalk paint once it once it was dry because it's an off-white color and I wanted everything to be uniform I wanted to go ahead and get the back done before I went any further with the front so I wanted to get that base coat of paint on there which I just chose to go with a black chalk paint so now I'm taking my Distress Oxide Sprays. The first one is Vintage Photo. I'm going to spray that on there, add some water, and dab it back, and just kind of get a nice base into all the crevices of the details of the stencil and the crackle paste. Next up is um, Speckled Egg Spray. And I did have to put this in another spray bottle because the one it came in wasn't working properly. So I went ahead and sprayed that on there. I realized at this point I should have sealed the chalk paste and chalk painted area in the center there where I did the stencil. 
because I it just completely saturated that porous chalk paint and um, it just would have been better if I if it was sealed I could have wiped it back and still left some of the white that I wanted highlighted so here's where I'm going in with my little sponge brush just a very dry brush just re-highlighting those areas and so then it was time to go ahead and start painting the outside of the frame and I just went ahead and did my black chalk paint to give it a good base color to cover up all that red in the wood and then I could go in with my navy blue acrylic paint over that. I'm making two more of the lock and key castings to put over the area where the handles were on that tray where those little pieces were screwed in it left indentations in the wood that you know really still showed up through the paint and everything so I wanted to cover those and I thought this would just be the perfect little accent piece on there and it would cover up those indentations so I just made two more of those and applied them with my wood glue I should have done this before I painted but I did not come up with this idea until after I had painted it, I um, all along through the process of making this, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do in those spots. And then it finally just came to me. So I'm like, well, let's just do it. And I can just paint over them and make them look like it was all part of the original plan. So now I'm going to use my sealer. And this is where I discovered, again, that sealing that chalked paint area would have been the thing to do it bringing this wet sealer onto here just completely blended those colors and gave me a green color so I dabbed that off and I realized that that didn't cause a problem on the crackle paste it has a different coating to it like it just doesn't it's not affected like the chalk paint is so I went ahead and sealed that with it but then I had to go ahead and give the center part a coat of clear spray paint in order to seal it. I could not use the liquid sealer. So once that was all done, then I went in with my white wax over the frame and the little uh, castings that I put on the frame so that I could go in with my white wax and brush that on and then wipe it back so that I could just kind of mute this color down and give it some age. And anywhere in those castings where I feel like the white wax is just like too thick, I just use a toothpick to scrape it out of there. And here I'm applying it to the back. You can see that I wrapped that blue paint around the edges of that frame and just left the very back portion black. So now I'm using my Stays on Ink in Midnight Blue on the Kindest Regards stamp from IOD to put over my little white bunny. I just realized I forgot to mention the little white bunny came from Hobby Lobby. It's just a little wooden cutout and I gave him a couple of coats of the white chalk paint. And I was super excited to use this stamp. I finally got it after a really long time of it always being out of stock. I finally got it and it worked perfectly for this. So now I'm going to use the Dixie Belle Van Dyke Brown Glaze for these little wood beads. I'm just spooning some of this into a sandwich bag. I'm going to coat the beads and then let them dry. I want to put them on the bottom of the bunny so that he will sit up just a little bit off of this tray. While I'm waiting for those to dry, I'm going to use the leftover glaze in that bag. With my finger, I'm going around the edges of the bunny, and then I also kind of lightly smear up onto the front of it as well. I'm trying to not get too much on there, but just, just give it an aged look. And then I have to use a brush to get into the little places where my finger wouldn't fit. 
While I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm going to take my antique gold rub and buff, and just with my finger, I'm going to highlight the castings I did on the top and bottom of the tray. Then I decide to go around the edge of the tray and around the edge of that inside perimeter as well. So here's where I decide to hot glue these beads onto the bunny and then hot glue that onto the tray and I wondered if this would work with all that texture and everything going on and no it did not work. So back to the drawing board I had to take everything off and peel all that glue off of everything. <laughs> Ugh, I knew this wasn't going to work. I don't know why I did it. You know quick and easy. So the what I decided to do was use wood glue to attach the beads to the bunny and then I'm going to use E6000 to attach the bunny to the board. I placed him on there and then put some heavy objects on top and let it sit overnight. That worked perfectly. This little guy is stuck on there for all of eternity. And with that, this little project is done. And now we can take a look at how everything turned out. Thank you so much for spending time with me here today. I hope you find my content useful. But most of all, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.